I'm going to jump right into an interesting topic. Uh, I've seen a lot of articles about this. I want to hear Belly Lars take because like, I know that I know this like I react to a lot of Bellar videos. That's because I feel like Bellar always brings a lot more insight from the experience that he has as a game developer, as well as some of the context that he has inside Blizzard. That's why I value his opinion a lot. But um, this one right here is deal backfires. Blizzard shuts down World of Warcraft and other games partners are furious. Interesting that he doesn't mention where they're shutting them down because I believe that this news is for specifically from China. Blizzard shuts down World of Warcraft and other games in China. And this is extremely interesting because this also involves netties. And let me and let me make sure that I will uh, that I will express my opinion on netties from the get-go and that is that I don't care for Netties. They were the ones who developed Diablo Immortal. I don't know whose decisions were in terms of like the redonkulous amounts of monetization that that game has. But even besides the monetization, the game is worse than mediocre. The game is just fucking terrible, even if you remove the monetization. I don't give a fuck what anybody else says, because I've heard so many people go, if you actually remove the monetization, the game's actually good. No, it's not. It's a fucking piece of shit. It's a fucking piece of shit. It's disgusting. Okay? That game is terrible, and it is actually set gaming back by, like, fucking 100 years at this point. It, 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 no ifs, ands, or buts about that. But anyway, um... <laughs> I just received a text by my wife. My wife is asking me what is going on with Twitter and Elon Musk. What the fuck? My wife. Bro. I'm, I'm about to text her back and just say, listen, you stick to your Instagram bullshit, all right? I know you like Instagram and Facebook. Stick to that. Don't worry about Twitter. Anyway, that's already going on a, on a tangent here, but let's let's take a look at Belly Lars' video. Welcome back to the show, everyone. And today I have an absolute. Oh, this is very loud. I'm sorry, guys. Did I, did I just blow out somebody's eardrums? I really apologize. Jesus Christ, belly lard. That was very uncalled for, my dude. Welcome back to the show, everyone. And today, oh, but it's actually loud on his end. Like he's over modulating on his mic. He's blowing up his mic. Welcome. Yeah, welcome back is. to the show, everyone. And today I have an absolutely mammoth news story for you. World of Warcraft, as well as all of the other Blizzard products, are going to, sh bar Diablo Immortal, are going to shut down. Yeah, bar Diablo Immortal, of course, because we have to keep Diablo Immortal going, baby. Yeah, rake in those massive profits. Man, fuck, <laughs> fuck all this nonsense. In China soon. The yeah, overall it's gonna be it's gonna be on the twenty third of January, if I'm not mistaken. I've read a couple of news articles about situation this. Situation here is quite incredible. I do imagine they will be back, but man, stuff has seriously went sour when it comes to the actual wheelings and dealings of the company. And, and let me also say something right off the bat, because like, in a ways, this news is very interesting to me, because in, it's like, we all know the, the situation that has been happening with Blizzard, but before we, before I start like expressing a lot of the things, I want to say that I think it sucks for people in China. Because there's a lot of people that probably also played Blizzard titles like back in the day when they were actually fantastic titles. And now they're seeing all of those things going away from the market. And I think it's just bad. But something that really bothers me is how like Blizzard has been completely shifting their development to be more favorable towards the Chinese market. And it's like, while I want the games to be everywhere like i want them to be available in china and shit i also think that i don't like the way that blizzard has evolved their business models to better suit the chinese market completely ignoring their western market like i feel like that also needs to be said a little bit but <clears throat> companies responsible for these games i'm gonna get into blizzard's statement first but you should know one of the most important people who works at NetEase basically launched a, I mean, basically called Activision Blizzard out on something. It's kind of okay. wild. Let's get into Blizzard's statement here. 
Okay, Blizzard Entertainment has announced, this is their press release, that it will be suspending most Blizzard game services in mainland China due to the expiration of its current licensing agreement with NetEase. Immortal stuff's all good. The two parties have not reached a deal to renew the agreements that is consistent with Blizzard's operating principles and commitments to players and employees. I think it's very important to. I, I wish. I wish we had. Like, I'm. I'm sorry about my chair noise, by the way. But it's like I wish we had much more information about. Again, we're not going to know this because this is all like internal stuff and and whatnot. But I wish we had more information about what terms specifically are they talking about. Like, which one of the two companies is being the one that is being more predatory towards consumers? Because like, I, I almost feel like. This could be either a revenue split, most likely it is a revenue split, but it could also be like people just being like, hey, maybe this is a bit much. I don't, I don't know. I, I wish that was the conversation, but it's probably just a friggin' revenue split. They're like, ah, we want this percentage. And Blizzard's like, no, we want this percentage. They're all just like being greedy and at the end, nobody actually gives a fuck whether or not the consumers are being properly serviced. That's probably the case, actually. These go, uh, these expire in January of 2023 or 2023, which is quite soon. And when that happens, you won't be able to log in. You won't be able to play. Rip. And this is kind of mammoth. And in a way, this is something that happened to World of Warcraft in the past, whenever Blizzard abandoned the Nine and moved to Netney's. But I think there is absolutely a lot of bad blood here because did you know there was a second World of Warcraft massively multiplayer online role-playing game that was in development for three years with a yeah, team of we talked about around that 100 people. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people don't actually know that, but that is a, a game that was very recently cancelled because... Did, did he say mobile at any point? Because it's a mobile World of Warcraft game. Negotiations between these companies broke down. Now, I'm going to get you. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, though, I'm so sad. I'm, so, I'm just like, oh, man, my heart is breaking down from us not getting a mobile World of Warcraft game. Oh, my God. How will I ever live? I am so, I am so beyond sad. No, <laughs> I needed this game in my life. No, I didn't, man. Fuck mobile games, man. I don't give a fuck. Fuck them. Big Boomer Rurikon doesn't like mobile games. Exactly like Evans is saying. Oh, no. Anyway. <laughs> Into the super spicy statement from Steven. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Shortform, who are straight up one of my favorite services on the entire internet. They're kind of like book summaries, but on utter steroids. Have you ever been, say, recommended a book, but you don't want to fully commit? You want to scope it out? Maybe you want to just get the gist of it? Or to more deeply understand its core ideas first? Well, that is where Shortform come in. They supercharge your ability to learn from and to enjoy books. And at shortform.com forward slash Bellier News, you will find five days of unlimited access and an extra 20% off an annual subscription, which I myself have. They add value in a way that is frankly stunning. So take one of my favorite books, right? It's uh, one I'd recommend to you. It's called Principles by Ray Dalio. So first, you can hit up their one-pager on the book. And if that piques your interest, you can then dive into their full book guide, where they have done so much heavy lifting in terms of giving you key context of the author, of the book's creation, synthesizing its ideas, helping you understand the perspective the author is coming from with the book. So these aren't just book summaries. They are... I wonder how the authors feel about something like that. ...your co-pilot. And then they essentially, well, network thought. They will smartly bring in relevant opinions from other books and other authors, all to help you actually get the complete picture to understand multiple perspectives. They've got over a thousand of the most popular books there, with more being added weekly. Plus, a lot of other content too, like incredible articles that are very, very, very timely and use their same approach. I've scoped out the competition in terms of services like this, and uh, short form are, they're the best, by far. 
and they actually add the most creative value. It's not just replacing books. The way that they are bringing in ideas from other authors essentially helps you network your own thoughts, understand perspectives with better context, and turn information into knowledge, which is what actually sparks the joy of learning. And that is why I absolutely love what they do. It's like the limitless pill for books. Shortform.com forward slash belly news for five days of unlimited access, and you'll get 20% off the annual plan with my link. Go check them out. They're awesome. Thanks for checking them out, guys. Seriously, they're awesome. They're a new brand, so uh, we appreciate uh, their support and yours. Okay, the cancelled World of Warcraft game. It was in development for three years. It was a co-development between Blizzard and NetEase. It was a new MMORPG. It was going to be set in a different time. Why would do it's almost like the words mobile are dirty. Belly large like I, I won't say it's for mobile. <laughs> I kind of think like that's important. Project Neptune's been in developer f development for three years. It was a co-development between Blizzard and uh Scumbag. Wait, uh Annettes. I'm sorry. I I meant that it, it was a slip of the tongue. It's like um, you know, the the people who do skin jobs on on glorious franchises like Diablo, you know? People who do skin jobs on on that, they just like pick up a an existing ARPG engine that they have. They slap a bunch of Diablo skins on top of it. And they're like, "Hey, it's called Diablo Immortal. It's amazing." The skin the skin job people that that's that's who they are. It would be set in a different time period as a spinoff to the main game, not a direct translation of WoW, but one that would be more suited to mobile play. The two companies disagreed over terms and ultimately called a halt to the project, which had been capped under wraps. A person familiar with the deal said, asking not to be identified discussing private information. Ooh. Such netties... <clears throat> Uh, uh, as, as such, Netties closed a team of 100 developers who have only partially been offered internal transfers. Time period to the current World of Warcraft timeline. That would either mean... It's like, listen, as a matter of fact, let me go one step further. Like, earlier I was saying that I didn't care about this game being cancelled. To be fair, that's actually not true. I do care. I think it's a positive thing that it was cancelled because the last thing we need is another fucking skin job from Netties. Sure, which I think would be extremely unlikely, or it would have been a past setting, perhaps, in the Warcraft universe. Who really knows what that could be? Warcraft 3 is obviously when a lot of factions actually meet each other, and there can be more of a world of Warcraft. So it would have been fascinating to learn there, and I would absolutely love to just see some info uh, on what this game would have been. But yes, they... Uh, they, they, you know, called it to a halt. 100 developers went and uh, some of them were offered internal transfers. So this is really the first, yeah, this is the first main indicator that something was going wrong in the relationship between these two companies. The other thing, of course, is Diablo Immortal, which we all know about. Now, Diablo Immortal, the current understanding is that that was also quite significantly developed by Netties, right? So... You know, that's obviously the two companies doing a major project together. For things to go sour such that everything else has went, I think that's pretty crazy, right? Like, whatever the development agreement was for Immortal, it's unimpacted by this. But that Blizzard is was willing to make such a move to pull out, that really does indicate something. Now, I want to touch on the market expectations here. So... There's a thing called the efficient market hypothesis, and it is just that hypothesis. But it kind of states that all known information is already priced into uh, what uh, price a stock is trading at. So that basically, unless your informational advantage constitutes insider trading, uh, you can't play the stock market. Now, this is one of those things, the efficient market hypothesis is false. But regular investors should probably treat it like it is true so they don't gamble their own money. But the point there basically is, I bring this up to say that things get priced, future expectations get priced into the value that a stock is currently trading at. And what we can see here when we compare Activision Blizzard to NetEase, NetEase experiences quite a sharp drop, and then of course we do see the buyback, whereas Activision Buy Blizzard the dip. <laughs> doesn't really have much of a move at all. 
And this would kind of indicate to us that the market expectation is that revenues from Blizzard titles from mainland China, that those revenues are not going to be lost, right, in the sort of long term. Whereas there were there were actually articles that talked about this and they said that the you know the amount of money that Netties was making from Blizzard games in China was actually not that significant which to me just once again highlights that it's like a lot of the moves that Blizzard has done to please the Chinese market in my opinion have been terrible moves because they've been alienating their western audience in favor of potential gains on the east and basically the east just going like whatever we don't care it, it's 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 just like so many years of them like putting all of their chips in China and shit just not paying off. They wanted that dirty Chinese dick so bad that like they could taste it. And by the way, when I say dirty Chinese dick, I meant like the, the dirty money. I guess I guess that some people will call that racist. That's not the connotation that I'm bringing to it. I'm just saying that like it is dirty mobile money. It is predatory money. That's the point that I'm getting at. For Netties, you can see what is perhaps being priced into that is that those revenues are going to be lost. Now, where this story honestly gets a bit shocking to me is when we actually dive into the statements from these companies. And while it's not the one that came first, I do want to talk about what Simon Zhu said. So he's the president of Netties Global Investment. Now, he said, you know, as a gamer who spent tens of thousands of hours, and obviously here, you know, machine translation stuff, obviously. So, you know, we're doing our best. But as a gamer who spent tens of thousands of hours in World of War, World of Warcraft, Starcraft, and Overwatch, I feel so heartbroken that I will no longer have access to my account and my memories next year. We're talking about an MO that people put a lot of time into, right? And I think a lot of people will be quick to be like, oh, this is just a business person, you know, saying this sort of business speech. I would remind you that World of Warcraft is extremely popular in China. And to really put a fine point on that, do you remember Warcraft the beginning? The how how can it be that popular in China when the the reports would indicate that the the percentage of profit that they made off of it was in the low single digits? Well, it could just mean that the other profits that they're making are much more significant than other industries. I don't know. Mm. Is it that popular? Movie that was distinctly not followed by Warcraft the Middle and Warcraft the End. Well, it had a worldwide gross of 439 million US dollars. The domestic gross, that is what came from America, was a mere 47 million dollars in the box office. America actually did oh, this terribly is the movie. with the Warcraft movie. This is the movie. I was like, wait, what the... F crap are we talking about this is the world of warcraft movie for a second there I was like whoa what the what this, yeah, these numbers don't add up but uh yeah world of warcraft movie was extremely popular in china for some reason wonder why maybe the lore of world of warcraft does not translate nearly as as well on the Chinese version of the game, and therefore they don't care as much about the story there. Because I know that in the West, the big thing was people were like, ah, but the story, this, uh, it's weird. And I just thought it was a cool action flick. Like, I, I didn't really see it as much more than that. There's a bunch of movies that I just see as like, oh, is it a neat action flick? All right, it doesn't have to be like the best thing in the world. I thought it was all right. I didn't really care that much about it. People were really mad about the World of Warcraft movie. I was like, oh. The Warcraft movie basically only did okay off the back of international sales. It did pretty good in EU, right, in other territories. But you can see here China, $222 million. More than half of this movie's gross came from China. And that does show us that Warcraft's massive in China. Like, that's something we've known for a long time. But... I just really want to put a point in that. So for a lot of gamers in China... Who I don't think that necessarily people going to see a movie indicates like the, the success of the game. It indicates the popularity of the, of the IP, but it doesn't necessarily correlate to the success of the game. Like I know a lot of people went to watch the World of Warcraft movie that don't necessarily play World of Warcraft. 
As a matter of fact, considering that a lot of people actually enjoyed the movie there, maybe the reason they enjoyed it is because they don't play World of Warcraft and they're not as up to date with the lore, they just enjoyed it as the movie that it was. Thing is, right, Chinese World of Warcraft fans loved World of Warcraft how it was. Blizzard didn't need to change it for them. True! Exactly! I've been playing World of Warcraft for so many years. This is a massive, uh, massive loss and a major point of frustration. Now, this is what Simon said that really just made me think, holy shit, I need to go upstairs and I need to record now. He said, one day... When what has happened behind the scenes could be told, developers and gamers will have a whole new level of understanding of how much damage a jerk can make. I feel terrible for players who lived in those worlds. Now, obviously, this is uh, you know this is a translation. What jerk? What jerk could he be? Could he be talking about the guy who made the tweet? That was the the thing that. Uh... That was the thing that I start because I've seen this reference to somebody being a jerk or whatever, and it's like I've been wondering if that is referencing the person who made the the tweet uh, from the Diablo uh, Immortal Twitter page, or if they're referencing someone over at Blizzard. Like Mrs. Tummy Giggle is saying that it's a Bobby callout. Apparently, he's talking about Bobby. I mean, Bobby is a piece of shit. I think everybody knows that. <laughs> you know, that's not going to change, right? But. I mean, even if a tame version of this is, uh, you know, even if a tame version of that is what happened, I mean, that just makes you think like, wow, what what happened? What did Blizzard push for? Now, this is the response from Simon. If we're actually to think about NetEase's statement and then Blizzard China's statement, well, NetEase did quite a lot of mirroring uh, what Blizzard said, uh, but they said, you know, as they were bringing more Blizzard games over to China, even getting a global release. Each time the introduction of a game, we're excited because these games carry our passion and youth. Um, that also in NetEase, there are thousands of hardcore fans of Blizzard games, which again, is very true. Uh, therefore, we are more empathetic to the feelings of players at this moment. Before today, we had been doing our best and negotiating with Blizzard in good faith to seek continued cooperation in mainland China. And this is where things get interesting. And this is where good we faith get is a, a bit more, term. shall we say, business talk to what Simon has alluded to. After long negotiations, we were still unable to reach agreement with Activision Blizzard on some key terms of cooperation. Unfortunately, Activision Blizzard has announced earlier today that they are ceasing its cooperation and we will have to accept this decision. So that, everyone, is... That is the crazy thing. The claim from Natties is that talks weren't going well, and then Blizzard just announced this. Maybe Whoa, with Oh, really? <laughs> Blizzard's like, you know what? Fuck y'all. <laughs> let's, let's, I know that I've been giving Netties a lot of shit, but you need to understand, I'm going to give both of these companies shit because at the end of the day, Diablo Immortal may have been a skin job, but it was, as Mrs. Tommy Giggles eloquently pointed out earlier, it was a commission skin job. Blizzard commissioned this skin job, so fuck them. Fuck them both. Much talking to Natties? It seemed like, from Blizzard's perspective, the, the time for negotiation was, was over, and they just made this announcement. The statement ends saying, after the shutdown, we will continue to hold our own way and not give up lightly. We believe that those who meet can meet again, which uh, again, could be translation, making it a bit more clunky, could also be saying, it is weird. we'll see you at Azeroth, I guess, somehow. Now, as for what Blizzard China said, well, this is quite interesting. So that he's going to be going like, hey, have you guys ever heard of a VPN? Wait, no, VPN can't work because supposedly these would be different servers. Assuming Blizzard will just straight up shut down the Asian servers, right? That's the way that, not the Asian servers, but the Chinese servers specifically, right? Or, is, or are the Chinese servers just hosted on some kind of like Asian servant cluster, server cluster and you'd still be able to bypass it using a VPN? Technically, a VPN is illegal in China. <laughs> Technically, plenty of things are illegal in plenty of places. 
They've said that all these games, which are operated by Shanghai NetEase Network Technology Development Company, will cease operation midnight, January 24th, 2023. Now, here's what's... There's two interesting things. Interesting thing number one. During the period from November to that date in January, WoW servers, games will all run. Dragonflight <laughs> will come out. At <laughs> the Blizzard doesn't give a fuck. They're like, yeah, we're closing it down. Wait, 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 wait. This actually, you know what? This makes sense. This makes sense. Blizzard's like, we're going out with a bang. Microsoft is buying our shit. We give a fuck. We don't give a flying fuck. Maybe, maybe that is actually the play. Maybe they don't have to worry about having an exclusive partner for Blizzard because Microsoft has a partner there. And then once Microsoft basically <laughs> gloms up Blizzard, they can just publish the games with whoever the Microsoft partner happens to be. It's a, it's a giga Chad move. And in the meantime, Blizzard's like, fuck yeah, we're releasing Dragonflight. Buy it, bitches. Play it for two months. Enjoy. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Blizzard's greed knows no bounds. Yes, we will sell you this game that will only work for two months. And guess what? We'll even sell you the one year subscription. Dude, imagine if, you know, you guys know how there's the one year subscription that will give you like all of those mounts and all of that bullshit. Blizzard's probably trying to sell that shit in China in it for, in it for a game that's not going to work come January. <laughs> it's Bobby's world. We're just living in it. Bobby don't give a fuck. Bobby's like, hells yeah, dude, play our games. They go away on January, but don't worry about it. Let's make sure to buy it. <laughs> oh my God, dude, the greed. As normal. So this is a really crazy situation where they're saying, hey, you will not have access to World of Warcraft as of midnight January the 23rd, but... If you want to, on November 28th, play Dragonflight, <laughs> buy it. Be our guest. Does make me think that Blizzard has zero, some sort of plan here. Zero right? fucks given, And then given, the second bro. interesting thing is saying, after the game server is closed, all account data and character data in each game, which includes, uh, but is not limited to, character data, game time, each game item, material, subscription, paid information, will be sealed. And they will properly handle game data in accordance with the requirements of laws and regulations to protect the uh, to protect the legitimate whose laws? China's laws? Ooh. Rights and interests of users. Uh, for people who have paid for but not consumed virtual currency or game time, uh, those uh, will be refunded. So yeah, basically, all your stuff's going into the Blizzard Vault and it's going to be sealed. As of right now, people do not know what's going to happen to their characters when they will get to play them again. I think there is not much of an expectation that World of Warcraft will disappear from China in any sort of long-term sense. I think you could actually even make the argument that this will be better for Blizzard's revenue. I mean, obviously they'll take a bit of a hit, but whatever deal that they negotiate with somebody else, one would presume that they basically got up, said, fuck off, we're doing something else to, to Netties. They probably only said that if they had a deal ready to be signed, right? Surely? I mean, that's one of the only things that it's in the terms Microsoft of risk thing. would make sense. Blizzard's it's not going Microsoft to say, thing, hey, dude. we're pulling out of like, I don't know, is, is China the largest country by population? It's bloody humongous anyway. They're not going to say, hey, we're pulling out of a massive market and we've got no plan to come back. I mean, that would be madness. Bobby would be crucified. And I think you would see that be reflected in the Activision Blizzard stock. So obviously there is some form, uh, you know, of, of plan, but there could be a disruption sure for, uh, for those players. China. But still, the fact that there may be some drama in this between what is in the official statement and uh, what Simon here has said, it does make me just kind of think, huh, will some drama actually come out about this story? Now, if you want to think about the why here, well, Blizzard's operating principles and commitments to players and employees. 
And that's the funny thing because- Dude, this is such a hopeful title right here. Like, look at this. Let, let, me, let me take my camera away. Look at this hopeful subtitle right here. The reasons. Blizzard returning to their principles. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Belly Lar going out in the- Ah, oh, copium. Let's go. <laughs> You could then look at the, uh, you know, by, by the oh, word of things, no. right? And like Blizzard's, you know, their corporate mission statement, their, uh, no, you know, corporate values that they've talked no, about here. No, and maybe no. we could go I through these believe. and think, hmm, how will Natties be violating them? I don't them? believe I don't that at all. Uh, I suppose what I could say, what we could maybe uh, speculate upon, is why. So one very transparent reason could just be money, right? Pretty obvious. They want more money, so they want a better deal. The license was coming up to expiry, right? So during the time period of that license, they were, I mean, th they had to keep running the game, but they knew that that was, was a looming deadline. And I think that other uh, other players in, in the game, right? Like perhaps Tencent, they also are probably sitting there side-eyeing Natty's thinking, huh, your contract is about to expire. I wonder what we can do. And one of the interesting things as well is, um, well, I think- what Dude, it's, it's like ISP plans. You know how when your, your ISP contract's about to expire, you start to receive messages from all the other ISPs. Hey, we got a really good deal for you. It's the same thing with the publishers in China. They're all messaging Blizzard like, hey, man, let's go. What a lot of businesses want is uncorrelated risk, uh, you know, so that they want things in different markets and stuff like that, so that if one thing goes down, they'll have something else. And certainly it's interesting with a lot of these very large Chinese companies that are entering the gaming space, or have really been in it for a long time, they in many ways are expanding outwards to the West because of kind of like worry about domestic regulation and uh, and that kind of thing. And I think that licensing a very popular game that they know is very beloved within China that comes from a Western developer, I mean, that is pretty damn good to uh, to have in your portfolio, right? Especially when World of Warcraft is a game that has very stably existed in China for quite a long time. In a world where these companies are worried about a lot of regulations, um, because there's, you know, the regulations on, on games in China is a very interesting topic. It's one that has led to pretty major games from these companies being pulled. It's led to a lot of stock price volatility, things like that. So having just a nice, regular, reliable cash cow like World of Warcraft, uh, perhaps like Overwatch 2, that sort of thing is, is just absolutely lovely uh, for these companies. It's what they're going to want. So I would imagine that this basically just means deadly squat and that in reality it is the commitment to their shareholders of delivering maximum value that's uh, perhaps going to lead to blizzard just seeking a better deal elsewhere now obviously that deal has not been announced but i mean we absolutely should expect that i mean as for other things blizzard could be worried about like we have had dramas you know you'll of course know about the whole blitz chung thing there is even the reason why diablo immortal was uh, delayed in the first place which was a uh, you know it was a tweet that uh, or a weibo post even that uh, you know was uh, let's just say risque for uh, for for the region and that obviously caused something to happen that contributed to the delay of Immortal. Now, Immortal did eventually release in mainland China to, uh, well, I would say roaring success when you actually look at the revenue that it's generated. Uh, who knows, maybe it could have done better, maybe it could have done worse. But ultimately, maybe there's drama there that we don't know. Some risk factors that Blizzard are not comfortable with that we don't know. But I would say, if Blizzard were worried about things like, uh, say, complying with state regulations, those are going to be materially impacting their business, no matter what partner they get, uh, the, the, you know, they actually go with uh, to get the game out in in China. Um, now, you could maybe say, well, what if Blizzard just does it themselves? Well, the thing there is, that's rather unprecedented. I mean, one example of a company doing that is uh, Tesla. Right, Tesla China is like it. It is Tesla. Uh, and, you know, you could maybe say that that came because there's a lot of government support. They really wanted to move into the EV space, 
and certainly allowing a company like Tesla to move into their region without having to go through the regular licensing procedure that happens with a game like, say, World of Warcraft. Uh, maybe they thought, okay, we'll get Tesla, we'll get some business. Also importantly, you know, engineering, technology, uh, experience, things like that you know, it'll be better for educating their workforce in the electric vehicle space, which is one that I think strategically they want their country to be really good at, as many countries do, because EVs are kind of like the next big thing. So you could maybe say that something weird has happened where Blizzard has been able to move in uh, to China themselves, or perhaps Blizzard China, because Blizzard China, you know, that that's the entity that had the licensing agreement with, of course, NetEase. So maybe Blizzard China has worked out a way where they can actually put the game out themselves, if that is the case. I mean, you're cutting a whole organization out of the chain. Yeah, there'll be some costs to pick up, but fundamentally, you're more vertically integrated, you are going to see more profit, because there's not, you know, there's, there's less players in the, in the revenue chain taking profit. Alternatively, though, they could achieve a similar thing by having a more lucrative deal with another partner in that region. Now, as for things going forward, well... Diablo Immortal is an interesting case because that is a co-development between those two companies. So, yeah, that's <laughs> that's going to continue. But here's what I think is interesting. Years ago, when Immortal was in development, they started making this World of Warcraft mobile MMORPG. And as we covered in a recent video on this channel that was diving into the particulars of Activision Blizzard's, uh, basically, their earnings call and where their revenue is coming from. And one of the things that really struck me in that video was even in a quarter where they don't have super major box releases, you can see that between King, Blizzard, and Activision, mobile revenue is actually absolutely humongous and extremely impactful for them as a company. So the idea of getting a Warcraft mobile game like a Warcraft mobile MMO. How depressing is is the is it to hear that? It's just like, oh yeah, mobile revenue is like up on all fronts. It's fantastic. Let's go. It's so mobile. Go, 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 go. Oh, that absolutely, I think, is something the Blizzard strategically would have wanted to do. Maybe Natty's pitched it to them and they said yes. Who really knows? But a lot of work obviously went into that all with Blizzard's approval, we know that strategically they want to move more and more towards mobile. Hope, well, I would say not at the expense. They want to expand into mobile. I think that's a better word than move into mobile because, of course, we're seeing the Warcraft development team also expand massively. So that basically, I think, means beyond Arclight Rumble, don't expect much in the way of Warcraft mobile games over the next while. And of course, Arclight Rumble, that's internally developed at Blizzard. I would say expect to see some form of uh, new partnership, but the things may be a bit rocky and that perhaps some bad blood is here, then maybe some dirty laundry will be aired. But absolutely, for millions of Chinese World of Warcraft players, this is bad news. I mean, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll do it live, right? Let's just go to Warcraft Logs. This is a, uh, it's like a, a site for World of Warcraft. You don't really need to know much about it to understand the point I'm about to make. But what's fascinating, right? Let, let's just go to Naxxramas, which is the first raid in Wrath of the Lich King Classic. So yeah, apparently there's a thing for uh, for Chinese warriors who are just sitting here at uh, all of these top rankings. Um, but the thing is, actually, this is not really the Warrior Master Race. Yeah, even in China, baby, let's go metric I would use, I would use like uh, the overall uh, parses. But the point basically is when you actually go into these parse counts, th there is so many of them from China, right? Like one of the fascinating things is just how massive Warcraft Classic has been in China. I'd say it's probably, you know, it's, it's probably not. I mean, actually, even just look at this, right? So this is just the reports that have been added to Warcraft logs, I, I think like in pretty much in, in real time. And you can see lots of Chinese names in there. So again, this is just making the point, Warcraft, World of Warcraft Classic is absolutely massive in the Chinese market. So yeah, this absolutely sucks massively for millions of players. As much as no Dragonflight will suck for a lot of people in China, 
Classic seems to be the thing that's been biggest there. So basically, there you go. That's the story. I think this is a developing one. And the fact that there is some bad blood and some drama, oh boy, that'll mean something. To leave you with, uh, short form are a new sponsor with us. Um, so I guess show them a welcome, say hello. Uh, I think they're a genuinely awesome, uh, awesome, awesome service. I've tried multiple competitors. Uh, they're the one that I actually do legitimately uh, use because I do want the knowledge. You know, I, I want the knowledge from books but there are so many books. A service like Shortform just helps me to navigate that space. And I would highly recommend it, uh, especially you know, if you're kind of thinking about a bit of self-development, you want to learn some new things. So for all that, the link's down below. So big thanks to Shortform for sponsoring us today. Um, it's great to have their support on the channel. Thank you to you for watching. And I suppose, let me know what you think is going to happen with this crazy story. I'll see you next time. So I'm going to link the video here. Make sure to uh, give it a like, give it some watch time, the usual stuff. You guys know how this works, hopefully by now. If you don't, then make sure to at least leave the video playing in the background for a bit. I'll just go in there, like, and leave because it's actually bad for the video. But um, another point that I would like to bring up with this particular story <clears throat> is the fact that in the last month alone, because I was watching this other uh, article about this, in the last month alone, let me just uh, pop this up as well. Uh, the last month alone, NetEase has taken a minority stake in Just Cause director Christopher Sundberg's studio Liquid Swords. I don't know too much about that. They acquired Goichi Suda51, Suda's Japan-based studio grasshopper manufacturer. That one hurts. That one hurts. This is the studio responsible for No More Heroes and other games that I care about. They just, just NetEase just like, fuck it, we'll just buy them. Just buy them. Fucking hurts, dude. And then they opened their own internal studio in Japan. GP Track 50, led by Resident Evil producer uh, Hiroyuki Kobayashi. It's it's like, bruh. NetEase is just like spreading itself. Its tendrils are spreading. Like Tencent. You know, it's like spreading. Doesn't Tencent own NetEase? I think they do. Whatever. But it's like... I don't know who's being the bigger asshole in this situation. Fundamentally, it's like, look, I know it sucks, but I wish that companies weren't as influent. And and this is the, the, the more fun part, right? You notice how we're talking about how the game itself has changed significantly in order to be more appealing to the Chinese market, right? How Blizzard has changed their video games to be more appealing to the Chinese market. This is, you know, this is just a fact at this point. And the interesting thing is that the people in the Chinese market, as per Bellular's video, those people are more interested in classical World of Warcraft than the modified version that was supposed to be more appealing for them. Like, what? <laughs> it's almost like what people actually want is the original vision of the developers as opposed to some fucking regionally curated garbage it's like, dude but yeah man there, there's a lot more to this than um than what bellar talked about because like i said there's also like uh, some of these posts would said uh where was was it in here um because I, I remember that there was something for about the percentage of profits that they made which again was in the low single, uh, here it is. NetEase claimed that Blizzard games represented low single digits as a percentage of its total net revenues and net income in 2021. And the same applied during the first nine months of 2022. So this is basically NetEase downplaying how much uh, Blizzard's games actually affect their bottom line. Now, could this be true? Could this be false? Who the hell knows? But, uh, you know, I, I would argue that that is, there's potential for that when you take into consideration what what Bellar previously said about people playing more classic than necessarily retail. It actually makes perfect sense because people actually want, you know, the original experience of old Blizzard style development. And what they're getting is this like regionally curated experience, which is subpar, basically. Companies don't seem to realize that audiences don't like over-localization. Exactly. The inherent foreignness of something is often part of the appeal. Exactly. Look, for instance, you, you don't have to look any further than Persona. 
You look at like Persona 4 and even Persona 5 and like a lot of the stuff is deeply rooted in Japanese culture and that's what makes it so appealing. You don't change those games when they come to a, to the West beyond just like, you know, making the translations and trying to adapt things as, as little as possible to maintain all of the foreign appeal of the game. Neo as well. Dark Souls for Japan. What? But yeah, it's like... There's a lot to this story. Uh, now, my my final conclusion when it comes to this is I actually think that the idea that Blizzard has, for starters, I think that it's all about percentage. I think that basically NetEase was like, look, we want more money. And Blizzard's like, no, 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 we want more money. And NetEase was like, no, 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 we want more money. And Blizzard says like, okay, bye. And the reason Blizzard was so comfortable saying, okay, bye, I actually think it's because they've been in talks with Microsoft because Microsoft is going to purchase Blizzard. Remember that. Not purchase, merger, whatever the hell you want to call it, right? They're set to merge with Blizzard uh, in June 2023, I think. Or is it spring 2023? I don't know if they given an exact month. So I think it was June 2023. And maybe Blizzard just went to Microsoft like, hey, who's your publishing partner in China? Because I'm pretty sure Microsoft has a Chinese publishing partner, right? Microsoft, Chinese publish partner okay microsoft and cetc who the hell is cetc i don't know uh i don't know who the ctc is one of china's china's large scale state-owned high-tech enterprise groups has been leading china's electronics information okay so this is for electronics but i i kind of feel like maybe we'll see Blizzard partnering up with one of the subsidiaries of CETC uh, because, you know, they just went to Microsoft and like, hey, we're having this problem. We want to be able to make more money in, in this thing. And NetEase are just like being, they're, they're wanting a bigger cut. So they went to Microsoft and it's like, hey, who can we partner with? And Microsoft maybe hook them up. Maybe. Again, I don't know. This could be a thing, could not be a thing. Who the fuck knows? But fundamentally, Microsoft would be, considering that they're still set to be, there hasn't been anything that has indicated that Microsoft has lost interest in the merger, it is in Microsoft's best interest to ensure that Blizzard operations remain strong in China as well. And therefore, I think that that would make sense. Again, I'm not too big of an analyst when it comes to these market things, but that is my logical conclusion. I think that that would make a lot of sense, but you know. It is what it is. Perhaps Wizard was like, we can pay you an exposure. How about it? <laughs> I will say them buying Grasshopper is surprising to me. Yeah, dude. It's like, hey. It is what it is. But anyways, that's that.